Hey there, everybody. This is Brian Fink from the Church of the Resurrection with a word from the DCC. And here we are, my friends. We are in the thick of it. Holy Week, just shy of the Triduum, and I'm pumped. I love the Triduum. It's, it's a powerful, powerful time of the year. The most important time of the year for Catholics and Christians. And I wanted to share with you one insight that I would hope might be helpful as you enter in. And it has to do with a really, really famous psalm and really, really famous words that Jesus utters from the cross. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And I wanted to share this with you because there's this really famous setting of that song. It's put to a hymn, and we sing it in Mass quite frequently. And if you've been alive in the last 40 or 50 years, you've probably heard it. If you've been to Mass, and it's, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Yeah. Without the flair at the end. Okay. But you've, you've heard it. We've all heard it. And it's powerful in its own way. And you're familiar with the verses. All who see me laugh at me. They mock me. They shake their head. He relied on the Lord. Let the Lord be his Savior. They cast, my, they cast uh, lots for my garments. I can number all my bones, etc., etc. And in, in some sense, it can help you enter in in a sort of emotional way to the agony of the cross. However, that setting in some ways is misleading. And probably because it's set to fit within a two minute and 30 second psalm that you sing at Mass. But the problem is that's not the heart of the psalm. The sadness, the agony, the abandonment is not the heart of that psalm. And Jesus, our Lord and Savior, was a master teacher a master rabbi who was very familiar with the Hebrew scriptures. And every word that he uttered from the cross was poignant, was deliberate. And when he invoked the first line of that psalm, Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Of course, he was experiencing a kind of abandonment, feeling the rejection that comes with a life filled with sin, the sin that he took on, sinless though he was, a sin that he took on, our sin. And yes, he experienced that, of course, in his humanity. However, friends, this psalm is not a psalm of defeat. It's a psalm of triumph. It's a psalm of victory. And the beautiful irony is that this psalm of victory is uttered from the cross. So yes, we're all familiar with the first few verses, but I want to share with you the last couple of stanzas from this psalm, because when a rabbi would invoke the first line, he intended for those who were listening to call to mind the whole psalm in its entirety and the theological richness of the entire psalm. Okay, So I want to share with you the last couple of stanzas, because this is no Psalm of defeat. Okay? All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. Bam. That doesn't sound like Jesus being sad, Jesus being defeated. It sounds like the Lord ruling over the nations and a.k.a. the entire world. Last verse. Yes, to him shall all the proud of the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and he who cannot keep himself alive. That would be us. Who cannot keep himself alive. Says the guy who's going to rise from the grave. Posterity shall serve him. Men shall tell of the Lord to the coming generation and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn. Us again. 
that he himself wrought it. My friends, we have a king for our Savior. We have a warrior who was not defeated on the cross, not defeated by death, who overcame death and sin and the flesh and the devil by the cross. This, my friends, is a song of victory. Whenever you hear it, remember, yes, the pain and agony and suffering that comes with the Lord's crucifixion, but remember that we have a warrior for our Savior. We have a king who will rule over the nations, who will not ever be defeated. Please pray for me. I'll be praying for you as you enter into the Triduum. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon.